please rise. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. The section of God's Word that guides our thoughts is taken from the letter of Hebrews, chapter 11, the first two verses. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. Here ends the Word. Please be seated. Dear friends in Christ, do you have a role model for your faith? A role model. Is there someone that you look up to and you think of them as an example? Maybe mom or dad, grandma or grandpa, maybe one of the uh, people from the scriptures. Do you have a hero? heroine of faith. If so, why did you select that person? Is it because of their implicit trust in God during difficult times? Was it because of their active prayer life? Was it uh, some other thing that they did to put their faith into action? What is it about them that made you select them for a role model. It's, it's good to have a role model. Role models for our faith inspire us. We marvel at their faith. Perhaps we too are moved to imitate their faith. Hebrews chapter 11 is that great chapter in the Bible that lists just some of the heroes and the heroines of the scripture. It's not an exhaustive list. It's, it's just uh, some of them. The rest of Hebrews, lists, uh, Hebrews chapter 11 lists those people. But in our scripture text for today, these two verses, it's kind of an introduction to the heroes of faith. Before talking about them, the writer to the Hebrews discusses faith. What is it? What is faith? What does God think about faith? And then, how is it put into action? Let's follow that flow of thought. We begin with a definition of faith. What is it? The writer of the Hebrews is quite clear. He puts it quite simply. He says this, faith is being sure of what we hope for, certain of what we do not see. Faith, or even the object of faith, what you believe in, is not something you can see. You cannot pick it up and touch it and handle it, examine it. You cannot take it to a scientific lab and have it inspected. It's, well, as he said, the substance of what we do not see. As an example of it, in verse 3, the very next verse, the writer talks about the creation of this world. He says, by faith we understand the universe was created at God's command. Believing in creation takes faith. You, you cannot uh, reproduce it, let's say, in a lab. Oh, you can find all kinds of evidence for creation in this beautiful world God made, but you cannot reproduce it. It takes faith. Faith in something. Faith in the promises of God. You know, faith is not just believing in nothing. It's not just wishful thinking or I hope this happens. Oh no. Faith, the object of faith, is the most solid and sure thing of all. Our theme for today says followers of Christ trust in his word, in his promises. God has made all kinds of promises to us, just as I told the children. He promises to be with us. He know, knows what's happening in your house and mine, knows what's going on. He knows our joys. He knows our disappointments. He promises he is caring for us. God promises our sins are washed away in the blood of the Lamb. He promises to be with us as we work our way toward heaven. And he promises for his namesake to take us into heaven. Faith trusts in those promises. They are the object. They are what we believe in. That's a very important point. Faith is not just what I think God might do. Faith is not what I hope God might do. Faith is trusting in what he has said. 
You and I, as followers of Christ, we have such faith. We trust in our Lord and in His promises. But sometimes, sometimes don't you see yourself in the behavior of that man who brought his son to Jesus for healing? He said to Jesus, I believe, help me overcome my unbelief. Don't you sometimes see yourself in his, word, in his words there? We doubt our Lord. We know what he said. We do have faith. But our sinful human nature just cries out, don't be a fool. Don't be a fool and believe in that. There's no proof of any of that. There's nothing solid. Show me your faith. Show me some proof. Our sinful nature cries that out. And so like the man, we say, help. Help me overcome my unbelief. And God does. He sends his Holy Spirit working through the word and the sacrament, through the means of grace. We'll be coming back to that toward the end of our message today. So I'll leave it for now. Faith. What is it? It is trusting in God's promises. What does God think about that? What does God think about those who trust in his word? Well, we might just quickly say he's happy about it. He's happy when his people trust in him. And that is absolutely true. That is what our scripture text says. It says this is what the ancients were commended for. The ancients, Adam and Eve, Sarah, Abraham, Deborah, Gideon, the list goes on. This is what they were commended for. God said good things about their faith. In fact, the rest of this chapter, chapter 11, talks about some of those ancients in the faith. The first one that's spoken about is Abel. You remember what happened with Cain and Abel. They both brought sacrifices to the Lord because uh, Abel took care of animals. He brought an animal as a sacrifice. Because Cain was a farmer, he brought grain as a sacrifice. Scripture says God looked with favor. He was pleased with the sacrifice of Abel, but not with Cain's. What was the difference? Many people think it was in what they brought, but that's not the case at all. It was their attitude. You see, Abel brought his in faith. That's what Hebrews tells us. By faith he brought the sacrifice. Cain, on the other hand, he simply brought it out of a sense of obligation or duty. God wants an offering? Okay, I'll bring an offering. There was no response of faith there, and God was not pleased with that. By faith, Abel pleased the Lord. The next in the list of those heroes of faith is a man named Enoch. We don't know much about him other than he was one of the two people that God took to heaven without them dying. It says Enoch pleased the Lord. And then it says without faith it's impossible to please the Lord. We could go on and talk about many of the other examples, but the point is the same in every single case. By faith they were commended. So it is with you and me. When you and I put our faith in whatever it is that God has said, he is pleased. The world around us may not be pleased. The world around us may insult our faith, but God commends our faith. And at the end of our days, we'll hear that con commendation. He will say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter the glory prepared for you. Faith. It's trusting in the clear sure word of the Lord. God is happy with that sort of faith. He commends it. The final thing I'll call your attention to is what faith moves people to do. You know, faith certainly is a matter of the head. It's a matter of the heart. But it's not only that. It's action. And that's really what the rest of chapter 11 talks about. Action. Faith in action. So let's take a look at some of these strange, at least seemingly strange, things that God's people did. Go back to Abel. 
I said he brought a sacrifice. What does that mean? It means he went out to his flock. He picked the best animal. He took that animal's life, not to cook the animal as food, but to burn it on the earth.